Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and previously on the Latte Panda Projects, we were doing a review on it. We did a full Mac OS Hackintosh install and then I did a quick review update on that as well to fix some various problems like the monitor and the audio. And now we are here with a 3D printed case. So let's get started. I know that Latte Panda was coming out with their own Titan case, which is so damn cool, but it's still not out yet. And I do need a case for this guy because I'm always constantly dropping it off the table without any grip or anything. So here I am designing my own 3D printed case, heavily inspired by the Mac Mini. Now the Mac Mini is slightly bigger. Uh, it's 197 by 197 by 33 in height. Um, while mine is 122 by 122 by 24. So it's about 50 millimeters smaller than the actual Mac mini. Now, if you're taking a look at what I'm showing you right now, uh, I did print it in a prototype build. So I'm using 0.2 layer height. So that's why you see a lot more lines. If I was gonna reprint this again, it will actually be on the 0.1 layer height, which will look a lot better and probably a different material because I'm just using the cheapest material I could find and the fastest print I could print at. As far as the lid, the lid is wood. Yes, I laser cut it that. Uh, and when I laser cut that, uh, I cut it before I finished the designs on the board itself, which means it's off by a little. It should be filling up the entire edge of it, but it didn't. And I put away my laser cutter for the winter, so I'm not going to be cutting another piece. But for you guys, I will have the laser cut design up as well as an actual 3D printed lid. That way, you, if you don't have a laser cutter, that's fine as well. Now on the bottom, I did use some Home Depot 2mm height rubber legs just to keep it in place and it works really well. Let's talk about the case a little. In the front, we have a 22 millimeter button. The hole itself is actually 18 millimeters, but the the button, the entire button itself is 22 millimeters. Then we have three holes for the USB ports. In the back, you have this huge hole to allow you to plug in the HDMI, the power, the network, and then whatever you want to run inside. On the top, you have this huge hole that's just because of this design, but in the 3D printed version, you'll have just the logo itself. And that allows for the air to breathe through. And on the bottom, you also have these slits. I will actually have another design that will just have slits on the top so you have no logos. That's really up to you how you want to do that. It works really well in this type of design. Now, it does get a lot of cool air to go in and heat does escape either from the front and from the back. But what I didn't notice is that the M.2 and the Wi-Fi card, if you plan to stick one in, it causes a lot more heat than the actual CPU, you could say. So it, in general, it actually gets a bit warm inside the whole thing. Now, as far as temps go, uh, the fan, it, the temps are very similar to when you have it opened as far as the CPU goes because you're getting a lot of cold air from the top but the fan does kick in more often than when you have it open. So that's the only downside to this, but the fan is very quiet where it's not even noticeable. Now on the bottom, you definitely need to put a gap because like I said, it causes a lot of heat. So it kind of like just stays there. So if you don't have these little tiny two millimeter feet or even bigger feet, um, the, hair, the air can escape and that's gonna cause a little bit of an issue. As far as the lid goes, you could just lift it up from the back and then it reveals a Latte Panda and the button itself. You have a lot of stuff on the left side that you could squeeze in if you wanna put something there. Uh, but in general, that's how the whole layout is. If you don't have the connector for the power switch, you could actually use these six pins that actually has like sleep one, sleep two, reset, power button, uh, the GPIO pins here. Now, as far as the M.2 PCIe slots, if you don't have the full size slot, I did also create these little um, rods that actually hold it into place. So I'll also have that in Thingiverse and links in the description below. Ultimately, right now, uh, the case works really well. Uh, I might want to redesign a little portion of it just to direct the air to go other ways instead of coming out from the front kind of like from the USB ports, but it's okay. The second version, the M2, will actually be higher and a little bit wider in all sides, probably by another 20 millimeter. That way I'm gonna actually hide all the USB ports. You will actually have to use uh, USB 3 extension cords. Uh, the reason why I'm lifting it up higher is because I'm actually gonna give it more airflow and you're gonna be able to fit in a two and a half inch SSD on the bottom. It'll look a little bit beefier, but I'll keep all the proportions the same, but it will also hide everything. So you'll only see the front button. Then the third version, I was thinking about making it completely different case. I don't even know if I'm gonna call it M3, but I'll see how it go from there. 
and I really want to design the trash can look, you know, the, I, the iMac Pros, the trash can. I think that will look pretty cool too. So that might be a version along the way. Anyway, if you guys enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. If you guys are going to print this and everything and you run into problems, put in the comments in Thingiverse or you could uh, tweet to me and leave a link here for my Twitter. If you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And as I say, my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.